And now we are going to have uh, an incredible scientist and uh, speaker. He was involved in the CERN research. Uh, he has a YouTube channel with more than 3 million followers. Uh, so let's have a warm uh, uh, round of applauses for Javier Santaolalla. Santa Olaya. Santa Olaya. Hello guys, how are you doing? Great? Yeah, at the end of the session of the day, your brain are now uh, uh, washed, right? <laughs> well, now I'm, I want to give you a talk about uh, something that is even bigger than, than a coder. For me, a coder is the, the biggest thing in the universe. There is only one thing above coders. It's God. <laughs> well, actually, I'm a particle physicist. I've been uh, doing research for, for in physics, in particle physics, but before I was a, a programmer, I, I was a, a telecommunication engineer. But uh, when I think about the universe, I realize that there is something, there is a link between how we, people we like coding, uh, think and how the universe is. And this is exactly what I'm going to tell, tell you during this session, the connection be between coding and the way a coder thinks about the universe and the universe itself. And I wanted to start, uh, it's, it's incredible what I said, right? This link between the universe and, and programmers. So it's, it's, it, and it's something that it's, it's for real. I wanted to start uh, with a quote from, you know, who? Einstein. It's always good to start this way, right? Saying something about the universe that is already being thought by this genius. The most incompre incomprehensible thing about the world is that it is comprehensible. Among all the quotes that this guy made, this is for me the most fascinating, because first it's paradoxical, and then it makes you think deeper. It's paradoxical because it's saying that something comprehensible is at the same time comprehensible, what's wrong with it? And, but at the same time, it makes you think in a different way. And I want to go deeper into this sentence, because for me, it's something that People that are not um, experts or are not science lovers, uh, because here you are mostly engineers, right? Hands up, any, any physicist or? Yeah, there are some physicists, ah, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fans of the universe, ast astronomers or something like this? Even if, if amateurs, yeah, so well, 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 the, the, there is something, that's something. Well, what I'm uh, what I'm about to say is that this sentence is uh, embodying something that I think is really profound about, about how we feel about the universe. It's comprehensible. We give it for granted, the fact that we make equations, and these equations represent the world. But this is not necessary for our world. This is the way it is, but it could have been very, very, very different. We realize, scientists realize, that we can somehow describe the world because the world is describable. And this is amazing. And it is something that is a big discovery. We today, we take it for granted that it's this way because we learned in the school. But in the end, it's something really profound about the universe. It's a characteristic of our universe that makes us get closer to the reality because it has this property. It can be comprehensible. But not only uh, was Einstein who thought this way, but also another genius of all times. This Italian guy, it's called Galileo Galilei. The sentence is one of the most quoted uh, in, in science. The bu book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. Take this one together with the previous one. So we can understand the universe and we can understand it by some symbols that make things easier to understand by these proportions, geometry, relations. So we have a key to understand the universe by just thinking in these terms, in mathematics. I like the, this way of seeing the world like, like, like a book that we can read. It's fine to see this way and we lovers of, of, and, and of the understanding we love it, the fact that we can understand, but we can go even farther 
if we think of the universe not like a book, bike, but like a code. Imagine uh, the universe is something like this. Well, uh, we, can be, we can agree that the universe must be something more difficult than this code, but if the universe is comprehensible and is written in a certain language, it's a code somehow, right? This is, the way, this is why I said before that coders and God some have something in common. <laughs> and this is something that you can put in your Tinder account. Uh, we have something in common with God. Probably you are successful for one night. But is, this, is nothing, this is something that is not that exact, exaggerated. I, I don't know. I don't know if you are believers or not, if you are Christians or you believe in anything. I don't care <laughs> much about it, in fact. <laughs> but the, this is really interesting that well, we have, uh, in general, in, in, in the earth, we have a mix of beliefs. But in the end, if you try to go deeper into these beliefs, there, there is this order. And this order should come from something. And this something, there are rules. At this rule, can be written like a code. So in the end, if the universe is understandable and comprehensible, probably it's coming from a code. And this is something that I, I, I me myself, I didn't invent. Uh, this is something that is believed by a big proportion of scientists, of physicists, that are really willing to grab the nature of the universe, but taking the, 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 the let's say, the fundamental formula the way the universe is described by this rule. Yeah, the universe is kind of a matrix of a space and time with links between particles that are the interactions, and these interactions are driven by somehow certain small rules. And the big thing about it, is, and I have really good news for you, and probably today is an important day for all of you, and you don't even know, is that today I'm going to show you the closest we have gotten to this comprehension. I'm going to show you the real code of the universe. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it compiles, I promise. <laughs> In fact, uh, we were talking before about, about Einstein. This, this usually be is... Um, is uh, referred as Einstein, Einstein's dream because the last 30 years of his career, that is the last, the worst 30 years or, or the the worst known 30 years of his career, what it said he got he um, he achieved nothing during these 30 years. They were the vote these 30 years to got what we call today to the unifica unification of forces. The unification of forces is exactly this. His mentality was driven by uh, this will of finding a formula, a holy formula that would describe anything. He who was, um, he was really a, a, mystic, um, a mystic guy. He was something that he, he thought a lot about the universe, the connections, and how the universe is, is connected. And he really thought that there would be something, uh, a, a big idea that would be explained anything. He, he represented God as a, as a whole universe, as nature. And the laws of nature would be the way he, he thought about uh, a superior being. He thought there would be some easy formula that would explain everything in the universe that would be Universal will be simple and will be beautiful. He really believed in the beauty of ideas. Today, f uh, 70 years after his death, we have something that's really close to what would be the Einstein's dream. And this is what I'm going to show you. This amazing formula that encloses all knowledge in science from Greeks to today, passing over Faraday, Feynman, uh, Planck, Einstein, and all the genius of all times. Are you ready to, to watch it? Three, two, one, go. This one. Um, so, well, uh, this is the formula I refer, I'm referring before. Uh, this is kind of 
OK, right? <laughs> Not bad. But it can be, uh, can be done better. In fact, this uh, it was, it's a small joke. I was joking to you. Haha. <laughs> uh, the real formula is this one. Well, it, it, this is the same formula, in fact. This, uh, it, this is the same. Actually, this is like when, uh, when someone takes you a photo at 5 a.m. after party, and this will be you in a Tinder picture profile. So <laughs> it's the same person, different, uh, different view, but this is the same formula. What I'm, going, what I'm going to show to you that this formula that this, it can, can be green in a cap, in a t-shirt. Uh, this formula is really uh, um, grabbing all the inf all information about science. It's, uh, it's compiling all the theories about the universe in one single line. And this is amazing, because anything uh, that you will to know about the universe can be answered by this question. You ask the, qu the, the equation, how the sun works, and it explain. you ask uh, why the, the electrons move this way, why I don't have a girlfriend, say, because you are ugly and, and poor. And <laughs> It, it, <laughs> it explains anything related with the, the way particles work. So we are really, 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 really close for, to an understanding of the universe. And this is really nice, because as I said to you before, many physicists, we, we, we believe that the universe is comprehensible and there is a master formula. This is the closest that ever human beings have been to this holy formula explaining the universe. We're close, very close. But this is the point of what I wanted to tell you, that this formula is fucking awesome, but uh, there are some miss pieces uh, within it. In the, in the 70s, this formula that was uh, a big development by several uh, big geniuses, among them Schrodinger, Heisenberg, Planck, Bohr, Einstein, they were working together to form to create this formula. Finally, they did it. This is here. But in the 60s, they realized that this formula would crash and would mean nothing unless there would be some energy in the universe that we can touch, but we can feel it. We call it, we call it love. Nah, joking. It's called <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, huh? Einstein saying that love is nah. It's called the Higgs field. The Higgs field. Okay, so this formula, this holy formula, it's only able to explain how universe work if there is an energy in the universe that creates what we call mass. And this actually, the, the Higgs field is over there. You see the V with the phi over there uh, at the, in the last line. This is the Higgs field. Well, we are in the 70s. Higgs has this great idea. There should be this, this energy um, everywhere around, but here the point. Uh, does this field exist? This is the last missing piece of this great equation, of this great formalism. This theory of everything, almost everything, this theory requires an energy that ha nobody has seen ever. But first, b before, before getting to this, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the Higgs field. What's the Higgs field and how it operates. I'm getting to the point, okay? I, I, I just, I just making a, a, a little turn around, la la la, to go to the whole point. But you, you will get there, I promise. So we are here. So what's the Higgs field? So now I will put you in a in a analogy that I'm certain you have feel in your life at least one time. Is a party, but this is not a normal party. This is a crazy party. This is un under control. This, <laughs> uh, this, uh, this is crazy, crazy everywhere. They, they are co cosmologists and they are talking about the cosmos, right? In the middle of the party, when suddenly uh, this uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth arrives to the party, so what's, what's, what, what happens? Well, then all cosmologists go to the, to her because she was in the Big Bang and she can uh, explain. <laughs> certain things about the universe. But the whole point about this analogy is how Elizabeth will react in this party. She will have certainly problems to move around the, the room, right? Because she's now 
in presence of many cosmologists that are making difficult the movement on the room. Well, now we can say Queen Elizabeth has a, uh, a big mass, because why is mass? Mass is kind of a resistance or in, in impediment to, uh, for the movement in the space. Now look to the second law of, of Newton. Newton second law. Newton second law, anyone here? Come on. Newton second law? No, this is the third, the third, the third, the second. No, almost. It's, it, it, da, da, you're the guy. You're the, uh, good, good. Applause, 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 applause. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is one of my dreams, talking to engineers about the second law of, of, of Newton. was <laughs> Orgasmic for me. So uh, uh, F uh, equals mass times acceleration. So now look to this formula, mass is kind of uh, mm, resistance for the acceleration. So given a mass, the more, uh, so given a force, the more the mass, the, um, for a certain acceleration, <laughs> yeah, given a mass, you have to give more, uh, more force to accelerate. So it's kind of an um, uh, impediment for, for, for acceleration. Actually, this, this formula really looks like uh, Ohm's law. That is, uh, V equals, I times uh, uh, R. So in, in the end, it's kind of a resistance. At the same, it's a formula that looks really, really similar. So this time, now we can understand what's going on with the mass. Mass is certain, uh, is, is, is the way the, the space, this energy of space is creating difficulty for the mass to move our, our on, on space. Yeah? Clear? No? So this is this is the the um, how the um, the Higgs uh, the Higgs field will operate to create mass, but now the point is how to create it, to how to create the Higgs boson so that we can learn about this point uh, of this mystery of the mass in the universe. That's why uh, people create these crazy things. Uh, this is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. This is a machine that is 27 kilometers long, 100 meters below surface, that it's taking protons uh, it's almost the speed of light. It's 99.99999% of speed of light to collide each other for a million times per second so that it can be recreated in the beginning of the universe only 10 to the tw minus 21 seconds after the Big Bang. This is amazing, right? Well, I, in fact, it is. I... <laughs> I, I fell in love with this, mm, this machine when I was uh, 22. This is only, only part of the story. Uh, the end of the story is uh, particle collides. They create a boson. You see uh, there are boson, if you want. And in the, in the end, this boson was shown in a uh, big amphitheater. Uh, it was 10 years ago. So now we're celebrating the 10th year of the discovery of the Higgs boson. With the discovery of the Higgs boson, we closed the standard model, the formula before I uh, showed before, and we're closer to the final understanding of the universe. So we certainly are closer to this final code that explains how the universe works. This is the part of the story, and this is the story that you can find in any book uh, about the Higgs boson. But what I wanted to do, in, in, in fact, is not this, but my experience. I was there that day. I worked for that for four years. I fell in love with these particles for 10 years. My life was crazy because I wanted to be there, and I, I made it in anything I could so that I could be part of this big project. And this is what I want to tell you. How, how was this year? Uh, where I learned working at CERN and working in uh, such a big discovery, and what is the link with probably what you do in your job, your, uh, in everyday job. So what I've learned about this big enterprise of learning about the universe, we learn it by coding. In fact, 99% um, of my job was coding. And why, when do we do that, we and uh, we see the universe with a different view. So this is me when I, when I was uh, a kid. This is the book that changed my life, uh, Historia del Tiempo uh, by Stephen Hawking, Story of Time. When I read it when I was 22, I was studying 
a telecommunication engineer. I read this book and my life was completely changed by this book. I learned about the Big Bang, the expansion of the universe, the quantum physics, relativity, things that never ever before uh, I've been told, nor, not even in the school. So when I learned about this story, I got crushed by it. I said to myself, this is something that is meaningful for me. In fact, I, I read that there will be data accelerator that will be recreating the Big Bang to see if we understand a little bit more about the composition of the universe. Look at me when I was 22, I was saying, wow, I want to be part of, s of such a project. I, I want to be part of a, such a dream of understanding the universe at, of, of a different level. So then I start to study. Look, if you want to get to something, you have to move. So I study engineer, telecommunication, telecommunication engineering, at the same time I do physics. So in the morning, engineer, in the afternoon, physics, in the night, Batman. So it was like, a <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really intense. But, but, but I did it, and I, I have to say that uh, I, was, I was really happy to be part of it. This is CERN. Uh, this is a lab that was created, created in the 50s in order to um, in, in order to reverse this movement of scientists uh, after the, the war and during the war, the move to the states. So uh, UNESCO met to say, come on guys, let's do something to, to block this movement of bright minds towards the other continent. And we, should we keep them with a big, big lab that could be trying to research about the constitution of matter. So this is how it, this uh, lab was created in the 50s. In the 60s, 70s, it started to achieve important results. In the 80s, they found new particles, bosons, W boson and Z boson. It was a really, 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 really big success. And finally, in, the, in 2010, it was ready to find the last piece of, of this uh, standard model, the Higgs boson. But it, it, and it was supposed to do so by this big experiment. It's called the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. That is a machine 27 kilometers long. It's 100 meters underground. And this is an amazing piece of technology that if you ever can visit, I really recommend to you because this is, a, this is something, it's one of the masterpieces of humanity, of engineering. This is a big, 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 uh, a development that is really amazing how it can describe the, the universe and find things, interesting things like the Higgs boson. By, by 2010, and this is me, jeje, <laughs> duras declaraciones, this is me, this is me, apparently, somehow, uh, when, I, when I got to CERN, uh, I was a uh, um, Graduate student in, in telecommunication, telecommunication engineering, and I was already fi I have already finished my physics degree, so I was exactly in the moment and uh, the perfect place because uh, the same time I reached CERN, I, I got to CERN, it started with the collision of, of particles. But imagine how how it was for me getting there after 10 years uh, studying so hard. So I remember that day it was uh, this place uh, is the entrance of the of, of the lab, and I was really amazed to be there because this is the same place that Bohr, Heisenberg, or Feynman has walked through in order to uh, to understand a little bit more about the universe. So I, I was walking over the same place that some of the most geniuses. Or, or the most important genius of the or, of history have already been passed over there. So I remember the first day I went there. I, I went to see my supervisor. I, I was uh, in f in front of him, and he said, "Javier, you achieved it. Congratulations!" I said, "Thank you very much." So, are you ready to visit the most important place at CERN? I said, of course, I'm ready. I, 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 I've been working for this for 10 years, so come on, show it to me. I, I, I can't believe I'm here. I'm already really excited, so show it to me. So my, uh, my Jedi master, that was my PhD thesis um, advisor, took me from several corridors, uh, stairs up, stairs down, and finally he opened a door, and I was there. 
And they'd say, wow, the cafeteria. <laughs> Come on. His name was Juan. Come on, Juan. I'm a scientist. I always am hungry. But today I wanted to be the most special place at CERN. And he said, no, no, no. This is the most important place, the cafeteria. It took me several years to realize why my supervisor took me to the cafeteria and why he said so. It's easy to get really impressed by big machinery as the, the one I showed to you before. And it's really easy to really get impressed by these big developments of engineer, engineering. But in the end, everything is done by people with ideas that are created in places like the cafeteria. What he wanted to say to me, and I really understand uh, several years afterwards, because I, I, I was part of this same story, is that the, the collective brain works better than individual brains isolated. And it's by exchanging ideas and sharing ideas and connecting ideas why we get to a better uh, understanding of things. And he said to me, that in this place, we, uh, it's impressive how at CERN there is no hierarchy. So the Nobel Prize sits with the, uh, with the uh, undergraduate student, and you can ask him anything. Or you can even say, uh, you are grown to a Nobel Prize. <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is great. But uh, it's, uh, most often uh, he's right and not you. But you can say it. <laughs> and uh, I, I, this is where I learned. This is one of most important, um, this, those most messages that I was given. Important ideas come from places where people sit, relax, and talk. And this is um, why I'm happy that you are here together. Because in the end, conferences and places where you are drinking a coffee probably partying tonight, or probably not tonight, but then in a few days in advance. This is the place where we share, we, where, where we talk, where we mm, interchange ideas, and in the end, where we make our own, um, our own ideas grow bigger. It's by ex exchanging. But this is not only the only big, um, uh, it was not the only big message that I got. Uh, one day walking through CERN, uh, there was many, many uh, streets, and all of them were named after s uh, someone, a, a big person in science. This is Ruth Marie Curie, that I guess all of you know who she is. This is also Ruth Albert Einstein, or there is Ruth uh, Max Planck. But one of the roots was Ruth Tim Berners-Lee. Did you know this guy? Yeah. Hands up, uh, all of you? Well, uh, a, a, big, a big amount, big amount, but yet uh, not all of you. But then I said, who, who is this guy? <laughs> so why, why, why this guy is here? I mean, I don't know who this guy is, uh, but it should be someone important. So after that, I wanted to check who this guy is, and I discovered a, a really interesting story. This guy was engineer at CERN, in the 90s. Uh, actually, um, we're talking about uh, the year 1989. But then there was a new experiment running at CERN. It's called LEP, Large Electron Position Collider. And this was about to be the biggest and most energetic uh, accelerator in the world. But then it was a really challenge how they could operate a machine of 27 kilometers long. We're talking about the 80s. So most of technology that we use today, it doesn't exist. So this guy realized, he was a student at CERN, this guy realized that there was a, um, uh, there was a leakage of information, important leakage of information, when this machinery was operated by a big international collaboration. Scientists arrive at CERN, they make changes and leave. And it was difficult to keep all this information and changes just by a book. So he realized, why don't we use the no new technologies of uh, connections so that we can create a place where the information is updated automa automatically from everywhere in the world and is kept uh, and, and is kept centralized in a single computer. Today we call it a server, 
and today we call to this interchange of information the World Wide Web. This is the name this guy gave to this idea. And it was in this proposal that this, this uh, the March of 1989, this is the, the foundation of where we all love. Every time we put three W's dot whatever dot com or whatever, we are referring to this single proposal done by a guy, a student in a physical, a particle physics laboratory. So it's an improbable, improbable story, right? And I learned a lot from this story. First, it, it comes from a student that gave, uh, had an idea uh, that it was not the, the idea he should have. He was working in particle physics, but he is, is uh, making a revolution in communication. So this is something that it goes beyond physics. So uh, it's incredible how, how we can get ideas that uh, can grow and um, bloom uh, in different places, and how ideas are important wherever they rise. The second important thing is, is what uh, the supervisor said. A uh, supervisor that suddenly has a student that is working towards uh, whatever, and suddenly came with an idea that is that something really different from his, his duty. He took the idea, he read the idea, and he wrote vague but exciting. So, well, you have to work a little bit more so that it, it looks serious, but it's exciting, so work more in this direction. Yeah, the supervisor could have said, no, Tim, uh, do whatever I said to you to do. No, Tim, you are somehow um, moving from what you should be doing. But he said, work about it, work on it. It's an excellent idea, probably you get something. Today is one of the biggest uh, developments in, in the recent years, and we, are, we all agree that it makes a really change in our society. The way we interchange com uh, information through this World Wide Web. This is an idea coming from, a, from uh, a guy working in particle physics. So nothing to do with information. And this, is for me, is an important message again. Uh, whatever you are doing, whatever you, uh, whatever you are uh, develop developing, uh, new ideas ha have also place. And we are all of us uh, in conditions of changing the world by great ideas that can grow in any place and in any moment. So this Tim Berners-Lee, one of the biggest names of, of modern times, comes from this humble... Uh, uh, beginnings, right? And the end, the, the third big uh, um, the third message I, I learned during these four years was that day. This is uh, a histogram <laughs> that is representing collision of particles. This histogram um, uh, shows some data that are the points that should lie in this soft and beautiful a green line. Uh, this is where the points should be accumulating. But somehow, at 125 uh, GeV, that is a measure of energy, whatever, at this point, there is a little bump. And this bump represents everything for us physicists, because bumps are new particles. And you see a big bump right there, right? Yeah, this is exciting. <laughs> if people cl clap when they say. Yeah, finally, we got uh, a new piece of, of information about the universe. We complete the standard model, and we're closer to the understanding of the, the way universe work. So we're closer to this big code of how the universe has been programmed. So we are closer to the final understanding of the universe. And it was by this graph that even if it looks nothing, it's, it's, it's been, it's, it's been uh, graphed by 10,000 people it's from everywhere in the world sharing this passion for knowledge. And this was the day, as I said before, it was the 4th of July of 2012. Here, uh, this is the amphitheatrum of, of CERN. We have uh, a really, really, really uh, incredible day because we dream 
of being there. Uh, there are some 1,000 people over there from different countries, with different realities, different backgrounds, different stories. All of them have different uh, path to that day, but we all share something in common. We have one thing in common, that this day we were fulfilling our goals, we are, our dreams came through that day. We, at some point in our lives, dreamed to be there, and finally we were achieving our big dreams. So this, well, this is an important day. Uh, uh, just it's so important that it was Peter Hicks. This is the father of Hicks Boson, uh, Francois Engler, who is also father of the Hicks uh, mechanism. And uh, imagine if it's important, that even God came. Is over there? You see. <laughs> Well, the, the girl is the, the first general director of CERN, so also important because we're talking also about women in science. So she's the first uh, general director of CERN, and but that time was the leader of the experiment who found the Higgs boson. And just before a uh, final round of questions, in case you want to ask anything, I always love to show these pictures. This picture only refer to physics, but I, I like to see it uh, as a wider thing that can refer to anything, from computing to uh, energy to whatever you do at home or in a bar, because it explains this this uh, picture how uh, many th uh, many things are ahead of us. I, I want to go really fast through it because I don't have time. But this is a line of energy, um, uh, and, it, and it's in log logarithmic scale. So it's you know this scale that is a little bit compressed. So the line, uh, as we collide particles, we give more energy to the vacuum, and as we give more energy to the vacuum, more particles pop up from the vacuum. So that uh, particles are, are like Pokémons that we can collect them and grab them and keep them. So the more energy of the collision, the more Pokémons we get. Look, the line, yellow line, is the maximum we have achieved as, as human beings. Uh, the, the, the mystery of the universe, the unification of forces, should be somewhere around the, uh, the, the orange line. So this is the unknown. Uh, and as you see, it's bigger, the unknown is bigger than the known. And this is some rule that is applied to anything. This is a, a place to play, to have fun, to enjoy. This is our place, guys. We live there in the, in the unknown, in the mystery. We're like an Age of Empires in a map. We, ha we have a lot of places to discover and a lot of, a lot of trees to cut. We have many things to do, and it's really fun. So uh, now it's time for you. For, for the young youngsters, for the ones who have ideas, to take this unknown and take it to the another level. So, as I said, I usually say in, 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 in my videos, at the end, uh, in, in English probably it sounds really weird, but I don't care. They say that uh, you should study and, and play hard because any of you could be the next Einstein or the next Marie Curie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here it says that I have uh, one minute and 40 seconds <laughs> for questions. <laughs> in any case, otherwise, I will stay over there. So uh, personal questions are also allowed in case, uh, in case you, you prefer individual, one-to-one. -one. But anyone, don't be shy, don't be shy. Come on. Or the universe or the <laughs> or whatever. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, uh, when the, um, the measurements about the, the mass of the uh, Gigs uh, particle uh -huh. was expected, I, I mean, when, when the scientific drew the, this curve, they expected to, to, to have this, this little bump in there, or it was just uh, a surprise? Ah, good question. Well, um, the Higgs boson, uh, in the theory, uh, we, we knew everything about it except the mass. So it, it should be within a wide band between 100 and 700, and it was looked in all this window. Uh, in the end, all the windows were rejected, and in the end, 
after two years of, of this hunt for the particle, it, it was this only window that, that kept to, to find it. And it appeared there. But it could have, the universe could have been really different if the Higgs boson had another mass, but it was a possibility. So the theory uh, explains everything but the mass, and the theory explains that if the particle is there, there should be a bump. Okay. Uh, referring to the unified, super beautiful formula, yeah. <laughs> if we already discovered the boson of Higgs, why we still say that that last bit, like the the feel of Higgs, is still a mystery? What what is there like? We know the boson exists, but we still don't know if uh, if that is uh, part of the unified formula. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Well, the fact is that the, w as we approach um, to the understanding of the universe and we get more uh, ideas of how the universe works, we're getting closer to a final description of the universe. But now the uh, the, mo the standard model is the the final or, or w the the last uh, uh, theory that we have. But still, we know it's, it's really incomplete, incomplete, and we know it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it fails. So the question is, uh, the real theory that it goes beyond this theory, that should be something that is bigger and that uh, explains better the universe, is this new theory uh, also including the Higgs boson? Uh, it should be, because it's there. So the Higgs boson exists, so whatever uh, would be the unified theory. It should also include a part of the universe that the, the Higgs field. So without Higgs field, um, we, we don't understand certain things like the mass. So it should be there, definitely. Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a question that I think is a bit controversial given your background, <laughs> but I think it's very related to a computer. Okay. That, what do you think about this theory that say that we live in a simulation? Ah, because <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> I like to know your thoughts. Thank you. Well, probably if you if you listen carefully to my first uh, sentences, you can uh, have part of the answer. I, I really uh, I, I really consider that uh, that theory as a possibility. Uh, today is not a, a scientific theory because um, there is not any prediction that it could uh, give and I everything we have about it, about the simulation theory, is just a uh, hypothesis or, or um, simple ideas, but it makes some sense. So this is why it's considered. So it's one of the possibilities. But uh, there's certain things that make me have trouble to uh, sleep in the night. <laughs> Probably if I tell to you, you will have trouble to sleep in the night. <laughs> but the universe works like a code. <laughs> uh, it works like a computer. Uh, do you know Wolfram? Who of you? Uh, many of you, right? Many of you know Wolfram. He's the father of Mathematica. And uh, he's a genius of science. Uh, like two years ago, he created a theory of the universe, a theory of everything. It was not a theory, it was ma more a methodolo methodology. It was more like a, a way to create theories. And uh, he, he wanted to create laws of physics based in computational uh, routines. Uh, by doing routines, he wanted to create all the laws of physics. And he showed that it was possible. So he work was just to say, there is another way of doing physics beyond mathematics that is computation. And by creating like a hypergraph uh, with links, he was able to create the laws of physics. And this was <laughs> not only this, so Wolfram is already uh, going in this direction. This is also the fact that the quantum physics uh, shows that the universe is a matrix. Uh, space and time are, are quantified. So uh, space is not continuum, time is not continuum. Time runs like a counter in a program. So it gets like tack, tick, tack, tack. It, it's crazy because it works like a clock in a, in a, in, in a computational whatever. So it's, it's also crazy. But uh, this is not only the, the, the thing. There are many things. And for me, uh, the, the biggest one who points in that, this direction is entropy. Uh, as engineers, you know that entropy is a measure of information. 
now nowadays most of physicists uh, give information a fundamental role in the universe. Uh, before it was matter uh, or, or space, the fundamental uh, magnitude about the universe. Many many scientists today believe that the universe is made of information. And if, if information is the fundamental element of the universe, we're talking that the universe is made of bits, and this a uh, little bit scary. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, uh, it's something that it's something to be considered, and this is not a stupidity, at least for me. Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> That formula that you've shown, I don't know how it works or what it... The what name? It's, no, 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 yeah. the formula. I don't know what it's trying to solve or what ah, does it mean. Whatever, yeah. whatever. Okay, the thing is, I mean, you are just getting closer to get whatever you want, okay? Is this applying for everything, even before the Big Bang? I mean, everything can be explained with this? Yeah. <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I must say, that this is a, uh, what, what is called a re reductionist approach, meaning that uh, there are a school of, mm, of think, uh, thinking uh, that says that we can explain all complexity in the universe if we understand the fundamental building blocks and the interaction of the building blocks. Uh, a reductionist will, will say that any, any, any field in, in the world can be reduced to connection of particles. So a reductionist will say that a thought can be explained by quantum uh, interactions between electrons. But not only a thought, also consciousness, or uh, an anything in psychology, anything in neurology, everything that exists can be uh, finally reduced to interaction of particles. If this is true, and this is an approach called reductionism, as we get closer to understand the building blocks of the universe, we will be getting closer to understand whatever you imagine. So this formula, this is not practical, because in the end, uh, if you want to solve a, a, molec a molecular uh, reaction and chemistry, it's easier to go to chemistry books than going back to this equation. But it's, it's uh, good for our, for our soul to know that everything comes from the, a singular uh, piece of knowledge. Even if you apply it or not, because probably it's not practical, it's good to know that everything comes from the same place. But again, this is a big, big, big uh, debate that we can stay here for years and trying to put all the elements together, because in the end it's a part of philosophy of uh, where everything comes from. People say that sometimes uh, 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 the, the whole is bigger than the parts. N some others think that the parts are everything that exists. So going back to this mentality, this equation explains everything, provided that this equation is everything. It's not today everything, there's missing parts, but if it would be everything, uh, somehow we would explain everything. Crazy, huh? <laughs> it's really crazy. Okay, many... Many thanks for your talk, Javi, and a big round of applause for him. Thank you, thank you, you very much. If you enjoyed the talk. Muchas gracias.